Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into the laboratory project Bezier Curves, and I'll look at part five, which looks at question five, and I believe it's the last question of the, lab of the laboratory project. So make sure to watch my earlier videos on parts one to four, which are just going over questions one to four. And to quickly recap on the Bezier Curves, uh, they are uh, basically a set of, or described by a set of parametric equations and a, and a cubic Bezier Curve is described in a way like this with four control points and the coordinates of, of these are inside these equations and the parameter t is from zero to one and in question one I graphed a particular Bezier curve and then question two I show that the tangent line uh, across the endpoints uh, goes through the middle points and I'll show that uh, in a bit describe that in more detail in a bit. And also in question three, I, I showed a looped Bezier curve. Question four, I showed that you could uh, write the letter C using Bezier curves. And now in question five, we'll look at this question right here, which states more complicated shapes can be represented by piecing together two or more Bezier curves. So suppose the first Bezier curves has control points P0, P1, P2, P3. And the second one has control points P3, P4, P5, and P6. If, well, yeah, yeah, basically, and these are connected by this P3 right here. So we, they both have a P3 here. So we can connect multiple ones and then using, uh, yeah, by, by having one of the control points on both sides. And if we want these uh, two, uh, yeah, if we want these two pieces to join together smoothly, then the tangents at these points on across both curves should match. And so the points P2, P3, and P4 all lie on this common tangent line. Because remember, in uh, question two, I showed that the derivative at the endpoints P0 and P3, uh, they go through the middle points, P2. So if this one goes through P2, it's connected. Then this, and, then, and if these are the same, P3 will connect to P4. So P2, P3, uh, and P4, all of them connected. And I'll describe that again as we go through this video. And now the question states, using this principle, find control points for a pair of Bezier curves that represent the letter S, like that. So basically what we could do is, well, we have a letter C here. So we could take this and basically duplicate it or in a way, just to modify it a bit so it looks better like an S like that. So we can take the C and then flip it and pretty much get an S. So that's what we will do in this question. And now just to recap question one, this is the graph uh, that I showed for the Bezier curve in red. There's a the control points across there. And then, then question two, I showed the derivative at the endpoints uh, at T0 and at T1, so that's T0, that's T1, is the slope. That's a slope, so it connects through this point like that. The slope P3 connects to P2 like that. That's question two, so make sure to watch out. In P3, I showed you could make a loop by just moving uh, this control point P1. And I was initially here, just move it across, you get a loop. And that's ori originally here, you move it across, and then the shape changes. So again, hence the name control. And there's a the letter C like that. And then if we duplicate it and move it around, we can get the letter, um, you yeah, we can get the letter S. Yeah, so what we could do is, well, uh, in question five, let's look at it. We can duplicate the curve in question four and then modify it a bit to ensure we form a smooth transition from the top and bottom. And we do this by ensuring the tangent lines at the connecting point match to avoid any sharp points. So what we want to do is, well, if we flip this and then what we have is this letter C, we're going to move this around somewhere so that we have, and I'm going to just draw it like this, an S, where at this point across, yeah, at this point across, if we draw the control points like that, this will be a tangent line, and it goes uh, flat straight through it. Let's just draw this better like that. And then this is the points that it connects to. So this is what I mean by the line connects through all of these points. There's P2, P3, and P4, all connected by one line, and draw that in red. So if we call this one, this point, Right, right, this is P0, and this tangent line like that. This is P1, and then it goes to P2, and then this is, we want a smooth transition so that the derivative is all the same across both of these, and this is at P3, and this is at P4. So there's our line connecting everything like that. Let's draw another tangent line across here, and move this around. So we want something that looks like this, and uh, make it symmetric, 
etc. And this is P4, and this is our P5 like that. And in fact, that is exactly what I did. So here's from the Desmos calculator. I created two uh, parametric equations, or two sets of parametric equations. The first one, you have the top letter C. And this is up to, uh, where's the uh, comma? So up to this comma, the way you write it is basically you write the x and y coordinates. That's the x, and this is the y coordinate. Para, 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 this is a pair of parametric equations like that. And then the bottom one is for our x3, x4, x5, x6, y3, y4, y5, y6, etc. So uh, likewise, here is our x, and here's our, I mean, here's our y, here's our x. It's from 0 to 1. We get a shape that looks like this and again note the symmetry in this. I'll go over this by let's just click the link and just play around with it. So here is the end result just to show you you know this amazing Desmos calculator. I uh, basically I just duplicated uh, the letter C or and then moved it around and I created extra points uh, like this. So that's, that's the original points x1, x, not, I mean x0, y0, in other words p0, p1, p2, p3. There's the parametric equations for a giant one like that and and then uh, basically you can move, uh, yeah I've made all these variables you can change it and these values change etc. This is y0 so it's pretty cool and also there's the lines you can draw this around this is just an amazing calculator. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I made this one like this, and I also added these extra points to have this, and you can move it around and notice what you get. You get crazy shapes like that. And also, if you hide these, what I want to do now is hide these, and also remember the line segments video I've done, the equation of a line. I have these particular ones. Let's just draw this from x3 to x4, that's this line. So if you use a specific line, or you could do a table like this with the Desmos, which is pretty cool. But I just want to graph the middle one. So this is from x3 to x4. Remember the equation, this is the equation of a parametric set of equations of a line, is there x, there's our y. So we want to do this one, and let's just draw the other one as well. Let me just hide this, so we can hide it. I'm gonna draw that line, that line is our x, 2 to x3, I believe that's this one, like that, yeah, so that's what we have. So if you want a smooth transition, because remember if you have it, like, let's say the slopes are different, you get a shape that looks like this, so there's a sharp point, doesn't look like an S much. So the idea is you want to make it look like an S, let's see, if we make it something like that where it's a slanted line, it's not like an S, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing curve. So you can move this around, you can move this try to get a good shape. Let's just click this x2, x3. And then the idea is you want a smooth transition and if you're a computer designer, uh, computer program designer, you can program this inside so the derivatives are the same. So let's something like that. And let's see how this shape looks like. Yeah, it looks uh, somewhat like an S. This one, you just gotta move this around a bit better. Oh, that's control point. Let's see what this is. Okay, so yes, yeah, so if you play this or play with this, uh, around here, try to make it symmetric in some way, and also make these slopes identical. So you get a shape that looks something like that, but here I've taken a particular one where I just made it symmetric. And here, note the symmetry in this above S curve. So again, this one is symmetric about, well, exactly, I would think, yeah, if you, if you graph this across like that, it's perfectly symmetric. You flip this way and then flip down across it. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. And and yeah, as you can see, this is perfectly symmetric or perfectly flat along this line. You could even calculate this out. This rise over run from here. This is just one, and then the that's the uh, rise. The run is from eight to twelve. That's four. This is from seven to eight is one, and then likewise from here you get, well, you could even count them, one, two, three, four, and this is one, this is four, like that. So perfectly aligned like that. 
Yeah, and there's our S script. So, uh, so yeah, and these are the, the two equations. Pretty cool. I just wanted to uh, go over this to show you that you can well write letters with these Bezier curves. And in fact, many laser printers and other computer-aided designs. So this one, laser printers use these Bezier curves in the back end and other computer-aided design. And I and I basically, and I believe even even what you're seeing right now with these symbols on your computer or phone. Uh, yeah, it's, they might even be using Bezier curves to uh, to graph these and stuff and, and represent them as symbols. So anyways, that's all for today. If you learn from this, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And, and yeah, and play around with that Desmos calculator is absolutely amazing. And just to show you that there's a lot of mathematics, even in just the simple lettering that you see on your screen. Anyways, all for today. I hope you learn. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.